Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. The summer triangle shines high in the sky, plus Mars and the moon pass through the horns of the bull. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, outreach astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guide to the sky this month on Stargazer. Next week, after it gets good and dark out, the three wonderfully bright stars of the summer triangle ride high in the heavens, and although they look like they're all the same to the naked eye, nothing could be farther from the truth. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for the last two weeks of July, around 10 p.m. facing east. Look way high up in the east, not far from overhead, where you'll see three bright stars, the brightest of which is the first point in the summer triangle, and the closest to overhead, Vega. The fifth brightest star in the entire sky, shining at what astronomers call zero magnitude, which makes it roughly two and a half times brighter than the other two bright stars of the summer triangle, the first magnitude stars Altair and Deneb. And if you connect these three very bright stars with lines, you'll see where the name Summer Triangle comes from. Now, each star is the brightest star of the constellation to which it belongs. Vega belongs to the constellation Lyra the Harp. Altair is the brightest star of Aquila the Eagle, and Deneb is the bright tail star of Cygnus the Swan. We can learn a lot about how bright and how far away stars really are, just looking at these three. You'd think that Vega, since it's the brightest, is the closest, but it's not. Vega is so far away it takes its light 25 years to reach us, which is why we say Vega is 25 light years away. It's almost one third farther away than dimmer Altair, which is the closest of the three at only 17 light years away, which means we see the light that left it only 17 years ago. So why is Vega so much brighter? Simple. Vega is a much bigger and much hotter star than Altair. Compared to our almost one million mile wide sun, Vega is almost two and a half times as wide, whereas Altair is only one and a third times the width of our sun. So next time you're out with friends stargazing, if someone in your group is 17 years old, you'll be able to say, hey, look at Altair. We're seeing the light tonight that left Altair when you were born. And if someone in your group is 25 years old, simply say, hey, look at Vega. The light we're seeing tonight is the light that left it during the year you were born. Kind of a nifty way to time travel, eh? But what about Deneb, which is only slightly dimmer than the closest of the three, Altair? Well, it's a whopping 1,500 light years away, which again means we are now seeing the light that left it 1,500 years ago. So if Deneb is almost as bright as 17 light year away Altair, it must be a much bigger and brighter star, and it is. Deneb is a whopping 116 times the diameter of our sun. This means that Deneb is as much wider than the sun as our sun is wider than the earth. Whew. In fact, as astronomer Fred Schaff puts it, Deneb releases as much light in one night as our sun does in a century. And if Deneb were as close as Vega, it would be as bright as the crescent moon. How bright is that? Well, go out the morning of July 25th and see for yourself. A beautiful waning crescent moon will be in the eastern sky before dawn for you to enjoy. On the 25th, it will be about halfway between Jupiter and Mars. The next day, the 26th, a skinnier moon will be just above Aldebaran, the red eye of Taurus the bull. And the next day, Wednesday the 27th, an even skinnier moon will make a beautiful sight as it passes between the tips of the horns of Taurus and will be only three degrees away from the red planet Mars. So get out next week and look for the three bright stars of the summer triangle, Vega, Altair, and Deneb riding high in the east. And in the morning, watch the waning crescent moon pass between the horns of Taurus as the moon approaches Mars. It's fascinating, plus it's fun. Keep looking up.